Today, we are taking our first look at the Ryzen 7 9700X from AMD. This is their new 8-core, 16-thread Zen 5 base CPU designed to replace the 7700X. Now, pricing has been set at $360 US, which is 10% less than the MSRP of the 7700X. So that seems pretty good. One problem though, it is 24% more expensive than the current retail price of the 7700X, which is just $290 US. So that's a pretty big premium for the new Zen 5 model, but AMD has claimed a 16% IPC improvement, and most of the gains will have to be IPC related, as the 9700X is clocked just 2% higher than the 7700X. That means the 9700X clocks as high as 5.5 GHz with a 65 watt TDP, and then can clock as low as 3.8 GHz for the base. In total, there's 8 megabytes of L2 cache, 1 megabyte per core, with a shared 32 megabyte L3 cache. As was the case with the 7700X, the maximum safe operating temperature, or TJ Max, has been set at 95 degrees, and the official maximum memory speed is DDR5 5600, but you can, of course, overclock higher. AMD says it's important to note that the TJ Max is the max safe operating temperature, not the absolute max temperature. So that is to say these processes are designed to run at TJ Max 24-7 without risk of damage or deterioration. At 95 degrees, it is still operating within specification. There was some talk that Zen 5 would support higher memory speeds, but AMD tells us that DDR5 6000 is going to be the sweet spot, with all CPUs capable of an FCLK of 2000 MHz. AMD says going above 2000 MHz may compromise stability or decouple the fabric clock from the memory clock, which will result in suboptimal performance, depending on how high the memory frequency is. AMD also made it clear that for best performance, run the memory and IMC at a one-to-one -one ratio, and for this DDR5 6000 is best, or the sweet spot as it's often referred to. So that means memory support for Zen 5 is very similar to Zen 4. Just get yourself a good quality DDR5 6000 kit, and this is how we will be testing. Speaking of which, we should probably just get to it. Now here's a look at the Cinebench multi-core performance, and I'm not sure what to make of this. The 9700X is a whole 2% faster than the 7700X in this test, and that's really not much of a performance uplift. It also means that for these multi-core workloads, AMD is still well behind Intel's Core i5-14600K. Now, despite the almost identical multi-core performance that of the 7700X, the 9700X is 10% faster when looking at single-core performance, and that's a reasonable improvement, and it could mean good things for gaming, but of course we will get to that soon. Before we do though, here's the total system power consumption numbers when running the Cinebench all-core workload. The 9700X averaged just 221 watts, which is a 27 watt saving when compared to the 7700X, and that works out to be an 11% reduction. Moving on to the 7-zip file manager testing, and we'll start with the compression results. Here the 9700X was actually 3% slower than the 7700X, so that's an extremely disappointing result. It was also slightly slower for the decompression workload, trailing by a 1.5% margin, so it's not much slower, but I think the fact that it's not a good bit faster is a real problem and a worrying sign for the 9700X. The Blender open data results go unchanged, 129 samples per minute for both the 7700X and 9700X, making the new Zen 5 processor 11% slower than the Core i5-14600K. Interestingly, when running the Corona 10 benchmark, we find that the 9700X is 11% faster than the 7700X, so a decent uplift there, and I was really hoping that we would see a lot more of this. Moving on to Photoshop, we see that the 9700X is 3% faster than the 7700X in this test, making it the fastest CPU tested, so a good result overall, but also very disappointing when compared to the part it's meant to be replacing. The 9700X was also faster in Premiere Pro, this time by a 6% margin, which again, it's not amazing, but it's also a lot better than 3%, so I guess we'll take it. Still, when compared to the 14600K, it was 2% slower. Okay, time for the gaming benchmarks, and we'll start with Baldur's Gate 3, and boy, does this look disappointing. The 9700X is a mere 2% faster than the 7700X, going from 113 to 115 FPS. So that's a sweet 2 FPS boost right there. Uh, let's just hope this is an outlier and we'll move on. 
Sadly though, it seems Baldur's Gate 3 wasn't an outlier. Testing with The Last of Us Part 1, we see that the 9700X is actually slower. Yeah, slower than the 7700X by 3% margin. I reran this test multiple times, I tried several different motherboards and memory kits, but one thing remained consistent, for the section of the game that we're testing, the 9700X was slower than the 7700X, so that is very poor performance. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, the 9700X is at least faster than the 7700X here, by a few frames, so a mere 2% improvement. And that is a disappointing improvement for sure, but as I said, at least it's faster in this example. Performance in Hogwarts Legacy is much the same using either the 7700X or 9700X, so no improvement here then. It's also disappointing to see that we're only looking at Core i7 at 12700K light performance in this example. The ACC results are actually pretty good. Actually, they're really good. The 9700X is a good bit faster than the 7700X, which is obviously what we want to see. In this example, the average frame rate was improved by 18%, which is a significant uplift, and it gets the 9700X pretty close to the 14900K. The Spider-Man remaster results though are less impressive, but at least we're still looking at a 5% boost, averaging 153 FPS, though that is 12700K light performance, so it's not amazing for a next-gen product. The 9700X also looks strong in Homeworld 3, despite being just 3% faster than the 7700X. It did match the average frame rate of the 14900K, with much better 1% lows, for whatever reason the Intel CPUs tank here when it comes to 1% lows. The 9700X also looks strong in a Plague Tale Requiem, but again, it was just 3% faster than the 7700X, so a few frames better than the 14900K, but much slower than the 7800X 3D. Counter-Strike 2 provides us with a rare example where the 9700X is double digits faster than the 7700X, averaging 536 frames per second, and that meant it was slower than only the 7800X 3D. Now, I'm sure you'll see some reviews of the 9700X where it's faster than the 7700X in Starfield, but those reviews will probably be testing with different quality settings or a different section of the game. They're certainly not wrong, it's just a different way of going about it. After many retests though, this is the best we saw from the 9700X under our test conditions, so a 4% loss to the 7700X. Next up we have Horizon Forbidden West, and this is another example where the 9700X and 7700X are very similar in terms of gaming performance, with the older 7700X offering a few extra frames. So, super disappointing stuff here from AMD, especially after two years. The 9700X was a whole percent faster in Hitman 3, taking us from 238 frames per second to 241 frames per second, so pretty riveting stuff. Finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and with it, another example where the 7700X is slightly faster than the 9700X. It is worth noting, though, that we base our data here on an average of six runs for this test, as the first few runs are heavily inflated for some reason. Anyway, at the end of the day, both CPUs delivered similar performance in this test. So across the 13 games we tested, the 9700X was a grand total of 3% faster than the 7700X. That's it. So it basically caught the Core i5-14600K. AMD claimed in their review guide that the 9700X is 9% faster than the 14700K across the games they tested, but we found it to be 5% slower. Now I have discussed my findings at length with AMD, and they didn't seem to think my data was off for the sample of games that I tested. Maybe 1-2% to lower than what they were seeing internally, though they were unwilling to share that internal data. But the point is, I expect you'll see reviews reporting the 9700X to be anywhere from 3-6% to faster than the 7700X, depending on the games and quality settings used for testing, and that is super disappointing. Now here's a quick look at total system power consumption when gaming, but please note I didn't have time to add all of the CPUs to this data set, but we do have the important parts, such as the 9700X and 7700X, and as you can see the 9700X only reduced total system usage by 16 watts, that's a 3% reduction. Of course that is a 26% saving when compared to the 14900K, which was limited to 253 watts in our test, but relative to Zen 4 the gains aren't that impressive. We saw a 23 watt reduction in total system usage when testing with The Last of Us Part 1, 
as the 9700X dropped to 491 watts from 514 watts with the 7700X. So in this example, that's a 4% reduction in power usage. It's not nothing, but also it's certainly not exciting. Now, a big deal was made of PBO for the 9700X because it's a 65 watt part, so there's meant to be headroom, but I'm not really seeing it. Sure, the Cinebench multi-core score was increased by 9%, which is nice, though the single core performance does go unchanged as it's not power limited, and we see that PBO also increases the total system usage by 25%, so that 9% boost certainly comes at a cost. But as for gaming, there's very little to be gained. At best, I found a 4% increase, but most of the titles we were looking at more like a 2% increase or thereabouts. Here's a quick look at the cost per frame when calculating just the cost of the CPU. And at this point, I should probably mention that AMD is asking $360 US for the 9700X, making it 24% more costly than the 7700X, which obviously isn't great given it was just 3% faster on average in our gaming tests. So when just factoring in the cost of the CPU alone, the 9700X wound up costing 21% more per frame than the 7700X and 11% more than the 7800X 3D, so you'd obviously just buy the 7800X 3D. Now, if we factor in the cost of a decent motherboard and 32GB memory kit, the 9700X still ends up costing 11% more per frame than the 7700X. It's also 13% more costly than the 7800X 3D, so again, if you're interested in gaming, you'd still just get the 7800X 3D. So there you have it. Uh, yeah, Zen 5. Uh, it's a bit of a flop in my opinion. In fact, it's kind of giving me Intel 11th gen vibes, so that's not good. And look, sure, it's, uh, it's a little bit faster while using a little bit less power, but overall, after two years, it's much the same. And making matters worse is that price premium. If the 9700X was slotting in at the same $290 US asking price as the 7700X, yeah, I guess, sure, that's fine. It's a small upgrade, uh, nothing to get excited about. It certainly would be bad or it'd be a lot less bad, but at a 24% premium, AMD can just keep this thing. I have no interest in the 9700X at this point in time. AMD seemed a bit lost with this release. They made a pretty big deal out of Zen 5 during the Computex trade show, despite having very little to show for themselves, though we had hoped for more given the IPC claims. But when it came to gaming, very little was revealed, and I guess we now know why. For me personally, the last week has been very frustrating trying to work out if what we were seeing from the 9700X was accurate, uh, did we have a defective chip, or was there something wrong with our test system? AMD gave us no guidance on how the 9700X should compare relative to the 7700X, and despite asking them directly several times, I only received very vague answers. As best as I can tell, after speaking with AMD, our results relative to the 7700X are accurate, maybe 1-2% to down on what AMD is seeing, but thereabouts. So how AMD handled this was very frustrating, and their review guide made no comparison of the 7700X, which is a crucial oversight, but I'm sure they did that deliberately. But yeah, this is the CPU the 9700X is replacing, and instead they compared it to the 14700K, and the results there really could be anything because of the memory AMD was using, the power profiles, all that stuff, so not really relevant or useful data for reviewers trying to work out if their 9700X is behaving as expected. As I noted earlier, I'm sure you'll come across some reviews with larger margins favoring the 9700X over the 7700X when compared to what we've shown you, but again, that will largely come down to the list of games used for testing, how the games are tested, as in the location, and of course the quality settings used. But based on what AMD tells us, you shouldn't see margins that are significantly larger than what we've shown. The 9700X just isn't that much faster than the 7700X, at least not across a good sample of games. But please, if you do see a review outlet who has the 9700X 2% faster in a game where we had it 2% slower, their results probably aren't wrong. In fact, they're almost certainly not. As I said, it'll come down to the test location and the settings used. Also, keep in mind 2% in either direction can be just a few frames. So when it's this tight, you will see some small movement in either direction. All of that said, I'm a bit miffed by how slow the 9700X is. It all seems rather pointless, and I can't imagine those upcoming X3D chips expected later this year are going to be all that impressive given what we've seen here. It was also shocking to find that the 9700X was actually slower 
than the 7700X in some games, and even some applications. And it's this inconsistent performance that makes the 9700X particularly bad in my opinion. But let's be real here, it is underwhelming at best. So I'm leaving my week-long experience with the 9700X feeling extremely disappointed. There's really very little, if anything, to get excited about here. And the introduction of this part, it really changes nothing. You'd just go ahead and still buy a 7700X or a 7800X 3D, as both parts offer far better value. And in the case of the 7800X 3D, it's significantly faster while costing just $20 more. So that's not great. Anyway, let me know what you think about the 9700X and always make sure to watch multiple reviews to form your opinion on this one because I'll be doing the same thing. I want to check out what everyone else had to say about this if they were as disappointed as I was. But yeah, it's going to do it for now. Um, like, subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Uh, we have Float Plane Patreon. Check that out if you're interested. But yeah, otherwise, I'm happy to be done with this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.